Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 10th of May. Heavy rains lash India's eastern coastal states as Cyclone Asani rages. Sri Lanka gives emergency powers to military, police after deadly clashes. And Afghan women protest Taliban's new decree to cover faces. And now for all the details, as the cyclone Asani raged on in the Bay of Bengal Ocean, heavy rainfall lashed parts of India's eastern coastal states of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal on Tuesday. The weather office said the cyclone was unlikely to make landfall and was expected to weaken gradually into a cyclonic storm by Wednesday morning. Heavy rains lashed parts of India's eastern coastal states of Odisha, West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh on Tuesday as Cyclone Asani raged on in the Bay of Bengal Ocean with indication of gradual weakening. IMD, the India Meteorological Department said the system was expected to recurve during the night and move along the Andhra Pradesh coast and gradually weaken into a cyclonic storm by Wednesday morning. However, it was unlikely to make landfall. In the wake of the natural phenomenon, Vishakhapatnam port suspended operations from Monday onwards, while around 23 flights were also cancelled. The severe cyclonic storm Asani over West Central Bay and adjoining Southwest Bay of Bengal now lies over the same region and it is at about 300 kilometers southeast of Kakinada and 330 kilometers south southeast of Vishakhapatnam. It is likely to move further northwestwards till tonight. Under the influence of the cyclone in the Bay of Bengal, thunderstorms, lightning and light rain were also forecast over Bihar, Jharkhand, Telangana and other states till May 12. Authorities along the eastern coast were on high alert and moved people from low-lying areas to safer places as a precautionary measure. Different disaster management teams were also prepared for any rescue and relief operations. And Bhagwant Man, the Chief Minister of India's Northern Punjab state bordering Pakistan on Tuesday held a high-level meeting with police officials and took swift cognizance of an explosion that occurred at the headquarters of Punjab Police Intelligence Wing in Mohali City on Monday night. He sought a report from the Director General of Police and Intelligence Officers over the explosion and said that strict punishment will be given to the culprits. There was no casualty or loss of life but police said it has not ruled out a terror angle in the Incident, in which they say that the attack took place from outside the building with a rocket-propelled grenade. Meanwhile, in the wake of the explosion, central intelligence agencies have swung into action and have intensified their operations to gather details into the incident. Jine bhi Punjab da mahol ko kharaab karan di koshish ki thi, o bakshan jaoga sak to sak saja milugi. Unhe diya kahi pidiya yad rakhan gaya ki asi Punjab jeda hasda hasda Punjab hai, unhu todan di koshish ki thi si. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka gave emergency powers on Tuesday to its military and police to detain people without warrants after a day of clashes pro and anti-government protesters that killed at least eight people and injured more than 200. The violence prompted Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa to step down from his post. Damaged and burnt vehicles were seen on the streets of Colombo as calm returned on Tuesday amid a curfew. The government of Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa on Tuesday gave emergency powers to the country's military and police to detain people without warrants. A day after, violent clashes between pro- and anti-government protesters killed at least eight people and injured more than 200 and prompted Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa to resign. Despite sporadic reports of unrest, the situation calmed by Tuesday, said police spokesman Nihal Thaldua, adding that, a nationwide curfew will be enforced until 7 a.m. on Wednesday. 
Meanwhile, Global Rights Watchdog Human Rights Watch expressed concern over the broad powers given to the security forces and urged they should not enable human rights violations in the country. On Tuesday, Mahinda's younger brother, President Gotabaya Rajpaksa, appealed people to remain calm and said all efforts will be made to restore political stability and resolve the ongoing economic crisis. The president had already declared a state of emergency last Friday as protests escalated. The main opposition party leader Sajid Premadasa earlier said the Rajpaksas must be held responsible for the clashes which started after pro-government supporters attacked anti-government protest camps. He termed the attacks an act of state terrorism. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's ousted Premier and PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan has termed his campaign against the newly formed government a jihad or holy war and said it was not political. Khan has announced he will lead an anti-government long march to Islamabad later this month. His remarks came after incumbent Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif blamed him for conspiring against the country. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan on Monday termed his anti government campaign a jihad or religious war and said it was not political, as he called newly elected Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his family liars and corrupt. Khan, campaigning for PTI's Islamabad Long March later this month, said he wondered how would Pakistan progress if the corrupt people ruled the country. Khan said his party only wants early elections as it refuses to accept the new government. We damage we have to here. politics. Khan's remarks came after PM Sharif in a statement on Sunday vowed to take legal action against him for allegedly making anti-state remarks during a rally in Abbottabad. Khan has repeatedly blamed the U.S. for conspiring to topple his government, along with leaders of the incumbent government, in a parliamentary vote in April. Sharif on Monday again lashed out at Khan in the parliament and said he was poisoning minds of Pakistanis against state institutions, which was tantamount to conspiracy, he said. Moving on, locals in Muzaffarabad and Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over indiscriminate felling of trees for timber as it is leading to environmental degradation and unusually warm temperatures in the illegally occupied region. Locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over indiscriminate felling of trees for timber as it is leading to environmental degradation and unusually warm temperatures in the illegally occupied region. Former administrator of Muzaffarabad District Council, Khurshid Hussain Kayani, blamed the rampant destruction of the natural resources has left the already fragile ecology on a brink, but the Pakistan government has continued to ignore their plight. और आपका तमाम माहौल जो है वो ये गर्मी की जो शिद्दत है इसमें अजाफा होगा तो दरख्तों की कटाई बंद की जाए ये सबसे बड़ा एम इश्यू है जंगलात के ताफ़ज़ करना Kiani also voiced concern that the government has failed to make provisions of accommodation and other facilities to attract tourists to the region locals blame due to poor power supply and bad roads tourism sector in the region has failed to realize its true potential under the illegal occupation of Pakistan while well, the Taliban in its latest decree ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to a signature policy of their past hardline rule. In wave of the recent restrictions imposed by the Taliban, Afghan women in capital Kabul took to the streets on Tuesday, raising their voices against the new hijab rule. Women protesting against Afghanistan's face scarf decree took to the streets on Tuesday in capital Kabul, raising their voices against recent restrictions imposed by the Taliban. The Taliban on Saturday ruled Afghan women must cover their faces, according to a decree from the group's supreme leader, an escalation of growing restrictions on women in public that is drawing a backlash from the international community and many Afghans. Most women in Afghanistan wear a headscarf for religious reasons, but many in urban areas such as Kabul do not cover their faces. 
فرهنگ خدا را تحت نام اسلام تحت نام ایجاد بر زنان افغانستان تحمیل میکنند از نو ماه حضور گروه طالب در افغانستان تمامی برنامه ها و آجنده گروه طالب مشخصا در مورد زنان افغانستان بوده برای محدود ساختن زنان افغانستان برای حسب زنان افغانستان از ساختار سیاسی و اجتماعی The Taliban has said it has changed since it last ruled when it banned girls' education or women leaving the house without a male relative, and women were required to cover their faces. However, in recent months, the administration has increased its restrictions on women, including rules limiting their travel without a male chaperone and banning men and women from visiting parks at the same time. Most girls were also barred from going to school beyond 7th grade. The U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said in a briefing on Monday that Washington will take steps to increase pressure on Afghanistan's Taliban government to reverse some of its recent decisions, restricting the rights of women and girls, if the hardline group shows no sign of rescinding the actions on its own. He did not elaborate on the possible steps or indicate how the group which has already implemented policies curbing 20 years of gains for girls' and women's rights, might have a change of heart. And after a two-year hiatus, India's southern city of Thrissur celebrated its famous temple festival, Thrissur Puram, on Tuesday with traditional fervor. Thousands of people flocked to the temple to witness the elephant parade, where tuskers decorated with traditional caparisons offer a visual treat to the devotees. Temple priests in India's southern Thrissur city of Kerala state on Tuesday performed a ritual to mark the beginning of largest and most extravagant Thrissur Puram festival. Devotees gathered in huge numbers at Vadakunathan temple as priests played musical instruments and performed on elephants to mark the festival in a grand manner after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID pandemic. Thrissur Puram is known for the parade of richly caprisoned jumbos performance of traditional music ensembles, fireworks and a sea of cheering people. Coming after two years for Trishur Puram and it is really nice to watch it live. That too, We got a chance to watch it from close, so it was really nice. It's a nice vibe. The two centuries old Trishur Puram had its origin in 1798 through a royal edict of the then Raja Ram Verma, popularly known as Saktan Thumpuran, a powerful ruler of the erstwhile princely state of Cochin. It is celebrated on the day when moon rises with the Puram star in the Malayalam calendar month of Medam, generally between April and May. Well, the hills in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state provide visiting tourists with an excellent opportunity to get a taste of adventure sports while relishing the scenic surroundings. In recent days, scores of tourists have been flocking the hills to experience adventure activities as well as escape the summer heat. The adventure destinations in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state are drawing the attention of adventure lovers from across the country. The hot climatic conditions in several states has also pushed tourists to throng to hill stations to enjoy the pleasant weather. The tourists are rushing to the hills to experience the adventure activities in the Himalayan region like hill trekking, rock climbing, rappelling and Burma Bridge. As in Punjab, it's very hot in Punjab. So we thought in time, we don't have a vacation right now. But we also have a plan that why don't we go out with the family? It's such like a heaven. Adventure sports like mountaineering, paragliding, water sports, skiing and rock climbing have gained popularity in Himachal Pradesh over the past few years and has helped boost the number of tourists visiting the valley. The tourism sector in Himachal Pradesh is considered the backbone of the state and contributes 6 to 7 percent to the state GDP. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.